everybody, it's your crazy fan girl Shime. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today we're going to be reviewing the Joker. Now, I gotta start off by saying how worried I was to actually go and see this film. A lot more than I was saying in my reactions to the trailers. I was so worried to see this. And not because everyone was posting articles about how dangerous it would be to go see the movie and how there was a danger of people bringing guns into the cinema etc but it was more about the actual movie itself. <laughs> I am a massive fan of the Batman universe and just the villain, the Joker itself, one of the best villains in all of the comic book world and he is one of my favourites and I was just so worried about how they were going to go about with his story and I've got to say it was absolutely phenomenal. This movie is amazing and I haven't been able to stop talking about it. I've literally been talking to the people who I know who have seen the movie and it is so good and does so much justice to the character of the Joker than just the mere mythology of him falling into um, a cylinder of acid. <laughs> There's so much more depth that they have gone into, especially Todd Phillips, obviously the director, and obviously he co-wrote the screenplay with um, Scott Silver, I'm pretty sure that's his name, and just the screenplay is beautiful and just so well done. And I cannot even begin to tell you how immensely happy I was while watching this film, especially the last 30 minutes of it. I think the guy next to me probably thought I was a little bit of a weirdo because I was like, hee hee hee, it was just so good. And I've got to say, like, I really thought people were over, like, stating that it was the movie of the year, but it is the movie of the year, and I'm going to delve into why it is, because it's just so good. I wasn't really sure how to break down this movie, because the reviews I've done, like, previously have mostly been Disney films and they've all had like a layout into how I do it but with this film it was like oh god where do I start so I'm gonna try and start with the technical aspects of the film before going into talking about the actors and the characters that were in this film now before I get into more about the pacing of this film I will say if you are expecting a action blockbuster film like The Avengers, this really isn't going to be a film like that. It is very slow paced and to me I felt the slow pacing of this film was very suitable because it is an origin film and the building and the structure of a villain until he is built throughout the film until the very end where he becomes the Joker itself and I felt like it was suitable. At the beginning it was a bit slow and I was like oh, okay god this is a bit slow. Like in the first like I think it was the first 20 minutes and then boom it was just Fine. It was like I was just stuck in that world of the Joker. It was so good. And I'm so glad in terms of the pacing that they didn't rush the transformation of Arthur into the Joker because I was worried um, when they did have the subway shooting like so early on in the movie I was like oh my god is he going to become the Joker now and then it's just going to be like full violence throughout the rest of the movie but it wasn't and I loved that progression from that moment on and then just the slow, like, building. But I'm gonna go into that more a little bit later when I do talk about Joaquin Phoenix's performance as the Joker, so we'll leave that for now. Now, the incredible references to the comics in this movie is so good, and I was just like a giddy child, like delving into all the information I knew about the Joker and Batman in this movie. And I have to say that even just the Joker being in an interview with Murray Franklin reminded me a lot of the comics of the 1986 The Dark Knight Returns. It was made into a movie in 2012 by the same name where Joker does indeed get interviewed by David Endo. Crying, I think that's how you say his name. I'm sorry if I butchered his name. I don't know how to say it But I also want to give a shout out to my cousin Pat. He has been my informative about just all the Information of Batman just pop culture in general and if it wasn't for him I would know a lot about the references that were actually in the Joker movie without him. So thank you, Pat I'm not sure if this is true, but I don't know, I felt like this was a reference to The Dark Knight where the Joker is in the cop car and he's leaning his head against the glass. I felt like that was a little bit of a nod towards the incredible Heath Ledger as the Joker a few years ago in Christopher Nolan's films and just, oh, Heath Ledger will always have a soft spot in my heart because he's such an amazing actor in Ozzy, but just he was an incredible Joker. And I felt like that was a little bit of a, a like a hint towards that and also during that same scene where the ambulance hits the cop car that really reminded me of that whole scene with the ambulance and just the hospital in general from Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. 
I just felt like that was a massive reference to that film and I really thought it was a great like aspect to put into the film. And something that has been on my mind in the past 48 hours of obviously writing my review and kind of like thinking about the Joker and the film itself, it is truly based off real life society now. And I feel like Todd Phillips is putting like a mirror in front of everybody who is watching and just society in general and showing that um, it is a true reflection of what's going on in today's world. And I know that people, especially in the media, are focusing so much on the violence ca that can impact everyone from watching this film, saying that it is going to be like a book of like teaching someone how to be a murderer. I was kind of like, no, that's not what this movie is about. There are so many intelligent aspects about this film, including the fact that it's touching upon the importance of mental health, the importance of listening to a society and their needs, and also the simple act of showing compassion to one another. And I feel like those little aspects are being ignored just for the big picture of violence and the act of violence that could occur. Like, yes, obviously people I'm not saying it's bad to be afraid, because I, even I was a little bit scared to go and see this film, not gonna lie. But, I mean, at the same time, the media shouldn't be trying to destroy a piece of art before they have even seen it. Especially for people who haven't seen it. Like, I don't want people to miss out on this movie, because it really is phenomenal. I'm going to go into more detail about the backlash a little bit later, but I want to talk now about the mythology. Now, a lot of people were scared about the mythology being ruined, and I was too, because the mythology of Batman and the story and the essence was just so important to the original content, but Todd Phillips did an amazing job with the mythology and just putting a small twist on it, because I was so afraid that Joker was going to be the one to kill Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne, and I was so, so scared. I was like, please don't do that, because that's not what the Joker did. But I loved how, in a way, he was involved. He influenced that man who did kill Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne. I loved that little aspect of it, and I just... Oh, that whole scene just gave me chills and it was just perfect. Okay, now the backlash. Um, I know a lot of people are saying how unrealistic this film is in terms of the, like, the fact that Arthur is getting it so unfair and that he's so unhappy and that everybody is so unhappy, but also the fact that Gotham is too dark. To people who haven't read the comics, Gotham has always been described this way and even Superman in a couple of the comics have like asked like why do people even live here it's so de like not depressing he's never said that but he says it in that way and obviously he also questions why Bruce lives there as the Batman but obviously Bruce has his reasons but we're not going to go into that but that's the whole reason of Gotham. Gotham is a really dark place with poverty and inequality in society and that's the whole essence of what Gotham is and even how Arthur was being treated people were questioning that and I was a little bit confused as to why because it is a true depiction of someone who is an invisible within society and he is someone with mental health he doesn't have a lot of money he doesn't have the best job and again he's treated wrong in society because of his mental health and because of you know the delusions the laughter got to get into that later but that was amazing but that's why like people treat him differently and are so cruel to him is because he's a little bit different and that does happen in society and that's why I don't understand why people are saying it's not a real like depiction of what society will be and I'm like it is it's perfect and that's why he says in his interview with Murray Franklin that if he was the one to die instead of those Wayne Industries employees he would have been ignored and just stepped over on the sidewalk and it is so so true and I don't know like when I remember coming home and doing a little bit of research and just seeing what people were saying and when I found that people were saying it's the wrong like depiction of it I was like what like I was just so shocked and I was like this is like the perfect way to create a villain and I just thought that it was really well done I'm not sure why there's so much backlash against that but I don't know, I guess people have different opinions, which is perfectly fine. And I felt also, just to go back to the aspect of Gotham, I felt Gotham was a character within itself. Like, it was a character. Like, this is Gotham. And then within Gotham, Joker was created. And there's this one line that a friend of mine were having a conversation about the Joker. I think it was before I went and saw the movie, we were talking about it. And he said, oh, hold on, I wrote the line down because I didn't want to forget it. 
Um, Batman is what Gotham needs but doesn't deserve. Joker is what Gotham deserves but doesn't need. And that stuck with me when I went to the film and when I came out because I was like, that is so freaking true. Especially when you go and see the movie in the way that it is from Arthur aka the Joker's perspective and it's just so so true because even throughout if you go back and watch Christopher Nolan's like series of the Batman movies it's so true Gotham doesn't deserve Batman and I guess it's it's true when saying that Gotham does really deserve the Joker in terms of when we look at this movie and all the like the cruelty we see him getting harbored with just because of his mental illness and because he's a little bit different. So I, I don't know, like obviously people have different opinions but I felt everything that happened in this movie was very well done and in order for them to create the character of the Joker they needed all that to happen but again everyone has different opinions. Now I'm going to jump into the characters and the actors of this movie and I'm going to say before obviously going into detail is that I think this is a really well put film on Todd Phillips and Scott Silver's behalf because they've done a really good job of maintaining that it is an origin story of Arthur aka the Joker and weaving all these characters into his story and into kind of like his tapestry of becoming the Joker. So I really loved like how obviously it maintained on Arthur but we had these characters coming in and just like, you know, they they had their own important part in his story and it was just, it was great. I'm also going to say that I'm going to talk about Joaquin Phoenix last because he's the one that I want to talk about the most, so I'm going to leave him till last and we're going to start off with Robert De Niro as Murray Franklin. So, I expected him to be a lot more eccentric and louder as a TV late night host. Um, so his performance was a little bit downplayed in my opinion, he was like way too calm I felt like as a TV host of the 80s I felt like his performance wasn't the best like it could have been a lot better and he could have put a lot more like I don't know like flair into his character I was intrigued by his personality when he was intrigued by the Joker's motivation to kill those three Wayne industry employees um just because it's a lot different from what we've seen from animated series and movies because usually the late night host will either laugh or be really cruel and obviously he was cruel in uh, um, the Joker's eyes at the end of the interview and it didn't end well <laughs> but at the same time I really liked that new take on him being a little bit intrigued and just questioning like what was going on so I felt like that was a really great segment for his character to actually like shine a little bit also an important factor that I found was that through his first appearance and when Arthur is kind of like imagining that he was in the crowd of his show that Arthur is desperate for someone to believe in him and to obviously love him but in a way more believe in him as a person and when he was pursuing comedy like having someone believe in him and have him like support him and stuff like that and that leads me to talking about Zazie Beetz's character Sophie Dumont. So Sophie Dumont I've never heard of her in the comics so I'm guessing that they made her up for this particular film which I'm perfectly fine with and her character was very very interesting especially with the big reveal we found out later on and I think it was great and again talking about what I said with Robert De Niro's character Arthur wanted someone to believe in him so obviously it feels like what happened was that he probably saw her like a few times maybe in the apartment and then he started to obviously become delusional about the fact that he was having a relationship with her she was supporting him and obviously being there for his comedy show and then with his mom and just it was incredible and just the the reveal like was so shocking especially when obviously he's sitting in the apartment and then she suddenly gasped like scared like because at first I thought oh she just like was shocked that he was there but then she's like you're in the wrong apartment I was like what and that was a great reveal I loved that and even <laughs> just the fact of her being in love with him and asking him and finding it attractive in a way that he was stalking her I was like mm, like are you okay lady but at the same time I was like it might be the perfect woman for Joker so it doesn't really matter but again that reveal was so so shocking that it was a delusion and at the same time it was just great I loved that now we're gonna jump right into Brett Cullen as Thomas Wayne now I've expressed my worry about the character being pushed into this new twist for this movie because obviously we know that 
Thomas Wayne was like the shining light of Gotham. He was like the new hope in a way. Um, and obviously was changed for this film to obviously fit like obviously the story they were going for. And I think it fit really well. And I became really, really intrigued, especially when I was starting to question like, what if Thomas Wayne is his father? Like that would be so, so weird, but it would be so perfect and just so like interesting. So I became really intrigued by that. And I was like, hmm, let's see how it goes. But then obviously it doesn't end up happening. But at the same time, it was so good and the movie actually makes you question it like is he the father of Arthur or is Arthur the son of like Thomas Wayne and then obviously it comes to that climax a little bit obviously when they're at the cinema and that scene between Thomas Wayne and Arthur is just so amazing and it's very almost moving in a way because like it's just like you see Arthur in so much pain and he's like begging him to like tell him the truth and then he's just becoming ov more overwhelmed etc and it's just it's crazy and then you find out the truth essentially from Thomas Wayne that he's adopted and it was just amazing like oh I absolutely love that scene but I also love how Thomas Wayne was an icon of someone who tried to break the inequality of society however it just kept getting thrown back in Gotham's face because he kept saying the wrong things and going about it the wrong way because in reality it seemed like he was more worried about the rich instead of the people who were really in need and especially that kind of like starts to go wrong especially when he calls the people who are unsuccessful and apparently jealous of other people um clowns and that begins that kind of like riots and the rise up from the people and it's just that that whole thing with the rise up of the people was amazing and I loved that build up and just like that scene just before the cinema obviously you see like the people like chanting and writing and it's just amazing and just it felt like that like something was ripped from a comic book especially in terms of the supporters of the Joker that kind of reminded me of that even though it wasn't that like moment that more happens at the end and I'll go into more detail about that but just that moment I was like so excited I was like oh my god this is amazing but anyway Gonna continue. Now, Frances Conroy as Penny Fleck. Just gonna say, I didn't like her from the beginning. The character of the mum. It was just very strange and she just gave a weird feeling off. And I was just like, there's something weird going on here. Like, I don't know what's going on, but there's something weird. Especially, not only because she kept asking about Thomas Wayne's letters and stuff like that. But just because she just had a weird vibe around her from the very beginning. Especially when she told... Arthur not to laugh at certain things and told him that something wasn't funny and stuff like that. And though it was annoying that she kept talking about Thomas Wayne, she was the one that kind of like sets off that question in everyone's mind like is he the father of Arthur? So it was really interesting to kind of like get that from her personality and what she was saying in the dialogue. So that was a great like set off for like an audience reaction in a way to kind of think that in the back of their heads. So I thought that was great. And again I knew something was off about her and unfortunately we find this out right when obviously Arthur visits Arkham Asylum. Oh that that scene was so good and then just oh you find out like she's delusional and she has that condition of like I think it was a split personality as well a little bit but it was also like that shock of the fact that she allowed her boyfriend to abuse Arthur and I didn't know that this was a regular occurrence children being strapped to radiators in America I was like what the hell like I was so shocked when I when they read that in the dialogue. I was like, what? Like, that's crazy. But then I went on the internet and researched that it happens a lot. But at the same time, it was just so shocking. Like, and then, you know, like, she's so delusional that she couldn't even, like, take in the fact that her son was being abused to the point where he did get brain damage and, you know, had that condition of laughing, obviously, when he gets overwhelmed. And it was just so heartbreaking. And and you sympathize with him as as though even though like at times you kind of feel a little bit like conflicted about what he's doing you sympathize with him because it's just so sad like this young man well not young man he's like in his mid 30s maybe mid 40s um this man is just so like damaged because of the actions of a lot of other people and this is something that i was thinking about especially talking in terms of the creation of the joker was that monsters are not born they are created and i feel like penny was a massive part of that creation whether it was by choice or not especially because of her condition with delusions she was a part of the creation of the joker now oh joaquin phoenix oh my god just 
I mean, this is another role to add to his wall of amazing talent. And I don't understand why he doesn't have an Oscar yet. He is so, so talented and just... just oh. I could, yeah, I could talk about how amazing he is because he's just so good and he definitely has become one of my favourite Jokers and it's not to say that he's overtaking the incredible performance of Heath Ledger but his own performance is so unique and just so well done in his own way and in his own fashion that it has to stand on his own because probably him and Heath Ledger are the two people who have done the role of the Joker just on point. It's just phenomenal. Especially for the people who are in love with DC will understand like how good of a job he's actually done with the character of the Joker. Now I'm going to go into more detail about the transformation of Arthur into the Joker but I just want to talk about that aspect of the laughing. Now the laughing at the beginning of the film right after the whole opening of him getting obviously bashed by those kids like him laughing for those first like two or three minutes in the opening everyone was dead silent and just tense there was like this intense feeling in the audience and then you find out that it is a condition due to the brain damage he had like I felt so sad and shocked when the card like obviously is shown on the screen I was like oh my god and then obviously you find out that it was due to the abuse he received as a child and it's just so heartbreaking and at the same time I was like that's phenomenal like it adds more essence to the Joker like because we've never gotten a true backstory of the Joker again like I said it's always just been a quick line of saying like you know he's either like he's fallen in acid and he's become crazy just suddenly um and that's <laughs> that's it for Joker but like with this it just makes so much sense and I felt like that was a great way to like put that in and make him laugh and just even in general with the laughing like he would laugh like obviously in overwhelming situations which was just sad especially with the subway scene and with Thomas Wayne the one with Thomas Wayne I felt really emotional when he was laughing and he he wasn't suppressing it he was just laughing out of anger and pain and just sadness and oh my heart broke in that scene I'm not gonna lie and oh my god I have to start off in terms of the transformation with the murder that happens on the subway um, because the first two is out of self-defense the first two gunshots he sets off against the employees but the third one he was on a hunt that was an execution and it was just so like powerful and just like oh like gut-wrenching when you see the third one he was like looking and like especially when he was like looking between the train doors and then running after him that felt like something the Joker would do especially when he's just holding the gun and just walking fast like oh my god that felt like something out of like the animated movies and the comics like that was really really good and oh my god that dance in the bathroom of the subway no not the subway it's just a random bathroom I thought it was in the bathroom of the subway but thinking about it now it's chilling but so how should I say it it's just like um, an image of freedom and this is what I was talking about when I looked at the trailer as well like he's so free when he's like dancing like in every other situation he's always really tense and frozen obviously due to PTSD and trauma that he's had but it's like when he's dancing and obviously after he's killed those three people who have, were bullying him, were bashing him up and just talking abuse to him, he felt free and obviously this is the building of the character of the Joker and slowly that gets built because of the deterioration of the character of Arthur and on the remains of that gets built the Joker and I felt like that was incredible and we see that through the slow progression of the film and that's why I felt like the pacing was perfect for the character of the Joker it's just so perfect and it's just oh so good and again I want to touch upon the quote like not born but created like so many people were involved in the creation of the Joker and this included like society Randall from his work mom Thomas Wayne Murray Franklin who like destroyed his career as a stand-up comedy even though it wasn't the best like you know he was trying his best but at the same time he was really destroyed and humiliated by Murray Franklin the most who he looked up to as an icon and that's the thing like I said Arthur was destroyed and on that Joker was built slowly 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 and you see that progression in the film and it's just incredible and it all climaxes in the third act of the film and just the last 
Like that third act in this film was just incredible. Like it was horrifying, but just amazing and just so well done, especially from beginning in the apartment and where like obviously Arthur had the white makeup on as the Joker. That was terrifying. And when he kills obviously Randall and the blood just kind of like drips on one side of the face, that was like, oh, that was yuck. That was crazy. And just that moment when um Gary is trying to get out of the obviously the, the apartment but unfortunately he can't reach the the lock because he's a small person it's just so sad and I was like terrified and I remember when the murder scene happened like all the girls like screamed because it was just so I knew it was coming but obviously still when you hear like the oh no it's just oh and just that whole scene is so terrifying but it is a sickening joke as well and that's what the Joker is he's so cruel and yet he makes such sickening jokes as well, so that's why. And and I don't understand why people don't understand that, especially people who have obviously read the comics, especially the recent ones with the ones with Jason Todd, because the cruelty that Joker gives to Jason Todd is on another level. So I was like shocked when people were saying it was too violent. I was like, there are worse films than this. This movie had very little violence in overall. And that's why I was like really shocked by people's reactions by it, like saying it was too much over the top. But I guess, again, everyone has opinions. I'm also glad that they didn't show him putting on the full Joker makeup. Instead, it just switches to him fully dressed. And that scene where he's walking, not walking, dancing happily down the stairs is that moment where Arthur's gone and it's Joker. Like, Arthur is truly gone. And I'm going to talk about that more. But in that moment, it was just the Joker. And he was so free. And just, again, it's kind of like that scene in the bathroom. And the subway scene, again, this time with the cops obviously chasing him, that felt like something ripped. Like I said this in the trailer reaction when this part came up. It felt like something from a comic book. Especially when Joker is standing there with the mask. And then he has all like these other guys wearing the mask behind him. That felt like a shot from like one of the comics or even from the Christopher Nolan film. Like especially the beginning where they're all put wearing the clown masks. That was so good. I got chills in that scene. And oh my god just thinking about it now I just remembered. When he like kind of clicks his heels when he gets out of the train and is watching the two police officers obviously get like <laughs> stamped on. It's just so like the Joker to do that, like to click his heels, laugh a little and then walk away, like that was perfect. And I was like kind of smiling in that scene because it was just so good and just so well done. Oh, and Murray's show is like the climax of the third act and it was, that whole segment is just so good. And that part where obviously Joker is kind of like standing there with the cigarette and Oh, that's that part where it's just on him. It's just so intense. He moves his body and he starts dancing again because he's so free. It's just so like chilling, but just so good because it he's free. He truly is. And he's no longer Arthur. And like I noticed, like Arthur was gone. He left him behind the curtain before he started dancing. And then he came out as the Joker. He was no longer Arthur. And it was just so, so good. And of course he was going to kill himself, and this was seen throughout the movie, like he was planning on killing himself on the show. But in a way, he still did it even though he killed Murray. Because, you know, even as he was talking throughout this interview, he left everything that Arthur was behind because his voice was clear. It was entirely different to how Arthur would speak. He no longer was like a little bit stuttering. He wasn't nervous about what he was saying. He didn't care about what anybody thought about what he was saying. And he didn't laugh out of fear. He laughed in glee at the end where he killed Murray. And that's when you realize he's Joker. Arthur's gone. Like, he's gone to hell. He's dead. And Joker is truly alive. And that was just amazing. Because we see, like, the passion that the Joker has. And the Joker has a lot of passion. And Joaquin Phoenix did a beautiful job of representing this. And especially when he's talking about, you know, being an invisible in society that he would be walked over if he was dying. And he was just sick and tired of being treated like 
in all honesty shit. So that's why he left it all behind and he became the Joker and embraced it. And I'm just gonna quickly jump to the scene where obviously the riders help the Joker out of the police car that's been smashed by the ambulance. That was so chilling because again, that felt like something out of the comic books, especially when, you know, the Joker wakes up, he starts standing up and everyone's like cheering him on. Like that was something out of a comic book. That was beautiful and just like, Oh, it was so chilling as well, like when he like dips his fingers into his mouth and just goes like that. Oh, that was so chilling and yet so perfect because it is something that Joker would do. And that part was just so incredible and yeah, chilling. It was terrifying. And I will say that the ending of the film, I mean, it has gotten different reactions. I feel like it was a little bit too bright, but I do love like how it was chilling to see that he was, you know, he had killed that psychologist and obviously was walking down the corridor. I do feel like it was way too bright of a note to end the film, especially with how bright Arkham Asylum was, because Arkham Asylum is a very, very dark place and it is very depressing in the comic books. So that's why I was a little bit off put by the whole bright sun coming in. Like if they had done this scene darker and like obviously the same way like him dancing, running out and then running across the corridor, like that part was so Joker when you know like he's laughing and then he walks out and then he just runs back. Like that was perfect. It was just too bright. Like if they had kept everything the same and just like made it darker, more gloomier in Arkham Asylum, it would have made more sense. Instead, it felt like too much of a happy note of him ex escaping. But at the same time, I really enjoyed the ending. So that was my review of The Joker. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give it a like, subscribe, comment, and please tell me your thoughts on The Joker film if you have seen it. If you haven't, Please know that it is okay if you wait until the movie is released on DVD or online or wherever because like obviously there is no safety concerns, I understand, but please don't miss out on this incredible work of art because seriously it is one of the best films I have seen in a very long time and especially if you're a DC fan you do not want to miss out on this incredible movie. And I just want to say one more thing, a lot of people have been complaining about the fact that Joker wasn't the mastermind we know him to be in this film and I'm kind of like, how do you expect him to be a mastermind if this is his origin story? This is the beginning of him becoming the Joker. So I was kind of like confused why people were saying that. A lot of people have been saying it on the internet and I was like, this is the beginning of his story. Because we do see that mastermind come out towards the end. Because obviously he was pla he had planned the death of not only himself but even Mari. Anyway enough of people's like backlash or whatever. This is filmed a little later because I forgot to put this in, but I will most definitely give this movie a 9.5 out of 10 because again, like I said, incredible film. I loved this film so much. I am definitely gonna go and see it again. And it was just phenomenal. It was amazing. And just thank you Todd Phillips for making this incredible, incredible movie. And just Joaquin Phoenix, Thank you for being the most incredible Joker that there has been in a long time, other than Heath Ledger. It's Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix. So again, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Crazy Bangle out. Woo!